Hey, howdy folks. About a week ago, maybe a little bit more than a week ago, Heesoft version 6.33 released, and I've made a habit of making these PSA kind of videos whenever a new version of Heesoft comes out, and even though I'm kind of like a week late to the party with that, I've had a little bit of time now to play with Heesoft, and so I figure, you know, better late than never. With that, we're going to go through the release notes here in uh, just a minute. Uh, I don't really make these videos, uh, uh, you know, like structured at all. I, these are just quick off the cuff. And the only reason I make them really is just some people are unaware of when there's a new version of Heesoft that comes out, whether you're not paying attention to the RSS feeds that are on like the uh, Heesoft homepage or you're not subscribed to any of the email lists or anything like that. You know, th this video is kind of as a PSA for you guys, but also I make these videos and really all the videos that I've made related to Heesoft, I make pretty much because... Uh, these were the types of resources or the types of like background information and things that I like to provide in these videos that I kind of wish that I had when I was getting started doing higher energy astronomy and astrophysics type of stuff. Not to say that like the guides and the resources that are available at the HESARC uh, aren't uh, great because they, they are great. They're really, really helpful. But for me, just coming into things completely new, it was kind of tricky and kind of difficult to know when to upgrade or like if there was a new version that I had to upgrade to, why I might want to upgrade or just even with installing Heesoft and, uh, you know, that's why I've done all the different guides that I have, whether I'm installing with Docker or whether I'm installing via source. So all that said now, uh, I will leave a bunch of different links in the description so that you can go through and you can find all this different reference material that you want. The first thing is I'll leave a link to where you can download Heesoft, whether that be via source, a pre-compiled binary, or with Docker. I'll leave a link to some of those instruction pages, and you can check that out. I'll leave a link to the release notes that we're going to go through here in a minute and that I'm going to share some of my own thoughts on. And then if you need help installing Heesoft or setting up any other type of stuff with Heesoft or you're a nicer analyst particularly and you need help understanding what's going on with some of the different nicer tools or whatever, again, I will of course first and foremost refer you to what the Heesark is doing because I'm not affiliated with NASA, the GSFC, or the Heesark. You should check out the official uh, you know documentation before you start coming to my th stuff. I'm just an independent researcher. All this is third-party information that I'm just kind of sharing Again, I'm not scripting anything, or I'm just kind of talking off the cup f from my own experience. Okay, I'll also leave links to a bunch of different videos that I've made regarding uh, installing Heesoft, whether that be through Docker more recently, or whether that be uh, one of the you know one of the first videos I made, which is installing Heesoft version 6.26, or another one I did later on for Heesoft version 6.28. If you follow those guides, those should get you to the point where you have a working version of Heesoft. With Docker, I didn't really do anything for uh, GUIs or uh, anything that is non-command line because for my own uses and my experience with using Heesoft with Docker, I really only need the CLI. I don't need any GUIs or anything like that. But you can follow those guides if you want to. Those will be linked in the description as well. Before getting into the release notes, I just want to say that uh, I will always encourage you to upgrade to the latest version of Heesoft. I, I know someone, I probably haven't talked to them in, in a few months now, but I know someone who is still stubbornly refusing to use any version of Heesoft other than version uh, 6.25. Whatever you know, whatever you know, whatever your use case is, and, and whether or not you want to upgrade. But generally speaking, there are going to be bug fixes and changes and improvements, even to older legacy, you know, missions and and the tools that come for analysis of, uh, you know, older legacy missions data that you know that's just been archived at this point. I mean, really, all of it's archived, but that's not really the point. Uh, hopefully, you get what I mean. But generally speaking, more so. Uh, new versions of Heesoft are going to focus on a lot of changes and improvements and things like that to uh, newer missions or missions that are still currently in operation. So for Heesoft version 6.33, most of the changes are going to be for XP and NICER. I can only really speak to the NICER side of things because, for, for full disclosure, I only really work with NICER and XTE data. I do dabble with new star data from time to time. I'll dip into other missions. You know, I'll dip into older missions like ASCA or ROSAT. You know, I have dipped into some of the XP data, but it's more so just like recreationally to be like, oh, hey, I wonder what's going on here. So I can't really speak too much to the XP side of things other than just like I was interested and started playing around with it. But all that said, let's quickly now go into the release notes.
All right, so here we are. You can see these release notes were written up on February the 23rd, 2024, so we're, uh, we're a little bit more than a week late to it, but it, right up here at the beginning, uh, he saw version 6.33 release is driven by new and updated mission-specific data analysis software for XB and NICER, okay? But there's always other enhancements and fixes. Okay, moving on a little bit, you can see there's, again, a bunch of different changes and things like that. There's things that have been fixed with X-Select, so that's worth paying attention to. Think a whole bunch of different things happening here with uh, X-Star, but even here for uh, ASCA, an older mission. You know, I've worked with ASCA data before in the past. It, again, it's an older mission. All the data is a lot older, but there's still even things being fixed, okay, here for ASCA. So just keep that in mind whenever you're deciding on whether or not you should upgrade or not. That's why, generally speaking, I will always encourage you uh, or anyone I know to upgrade to the latest version of Hesoft because there's those bug fixes and there's those changes in there. So what I would generally say is that unless you have a specific reason for not upgrading to a newer version of Hesoft, then don't upgrade to a newer version of Hesoft. Otherwise, I'd pretty much always encourage you to upgrade so that you can get the bug fixes and the changes and whatever else. It's entirely up to you. You can do, you know, whatever you want. This is just what I'm sharing from my own experience, okay? And that, that that's, again, why I'm making these different videos. That's why I make these videos, just to give my own perspective from my own experience, and maybe that might help you, maybe that might not. I really sincerely hope it doesn't confuse you. That's not at all what I'm trying to do at all with this, but let's get back into these release notes here. Okay, as I mentioned before, there's a lot of main changes to XP and NICER, and so there's a lot going on here with XP. There's things that have been added to these different tools. There's things that have been changed, okay? And so you can see here that the change log uh, in these release notes for XP are quite extensive. So definitely, if you're an XP user, you're going to want to upgrade. I imagine that with Chrism uh, being you know, newer and out, there's going to be a lot of different changes and things like that to come for doing analysis and doing uh, data preparation or whatever else with Chrism. So I'd expect that, you know, NICER is going to take like kind of like the third newest uh, seat to that. I don't really know how that's going to work. But anyways, let's get uh, moving on. And so, yeah, there's a lot of different changes to NICER. As you can see here, it says right at the beginning that most of these changes in the release are focusing on things related to the optical light leak issue that came about last year. Now, I can't really speak too much to the optical light leak issues with NICER. Uh, they haven't really affected me all too terribly much in my own work, but uh, I would encourage you to go uh, to the improved NICER data analysis threads and you know check out all of that information. There's a lot of different changes uh, back here in the change log, though, you can see that there's a whole bunch of these different changes now uh, where uh, you can now estimate Scorpion light curve back, uh, background models, or you can use the Scorpion model for background estimations with light curves for the NICER L3 uh, LC tool. The NICER L2 pipeline also has different changes that are, are again, going to be uh, useful after the optical light leak issue from May 2013. Not 2013, 2023, geez. But again, there's changes to the 3C50 model uh, back gen. There's, again, things changing with the Scorpion model. That's really important. There's changes with the NICER L3 spec tool and then all the different uh, other tools that are going to be running in the different pipelines that are going through there. And then there's a bunch of also other small bug fixes and changes. So the list of things that are being changed and that are going on with NICER are a lot less extensive. But again, with newer missions or active missions as they kind of progress through their mission, there's going to be bug fixes and changes and a whole bunch of different things that come in these newer versions of Hesoft. So if you're new to higher energy astronomy or higher energy astrophysics or whatever, you are going to want to particularly be paying attention to upgrading the to a newer version of Hesoft if you're using a current mission or a newer mission, particularly XB, NICER, with Chrism, again, you're gonna that, that's when you're gonna kind of want to upgrade. And just in case I haven't hammered the point home enough, uh, I, I do a lot of work with XTE probably just as much as I do with NICER, and there are still fixes and things that are changing with XTE related software. That is Hesoft version 6.33. I'm, you know, I didn't really go too in depth with it. It's just more of, again, a PSA where I can kind of just, you know, talk and. Uh, again, to share my own thoughts, share my own experience with it. This is meant to be a third party bit of supplemental information, you know, that may or may not be useful to you. You know, again, I will always refer you back to the official documentation and the official notes. If you're not 
aware of the Hesark RSS feeds. It's a great way for you to you know check out uh, or, or pay attention to when new things are going to come out. There's various different email lists. I heard about this from the nicer email list where there's a lot more uh, information from you know from the nicer team and who was it? Who was it that said it? it was, I don't know if this was. Yeah, uh, yeah, Craig Marquardt. You know, he's the one. Who, he's one of the few people that will always send out new uh, emails with information or things like that. Um, so there's there's always new things to come with that, and it's really useful. And so, otherwise, though, that's your PSA that he saw version six point three three is out. Don't worry, folks. If you're watching, if you're coming here to watch my math videos or some of my other astronomy or astrophysics videos. I'm still in the process of making them, but you know how things go if you are in the business world at all, which I can't imagine many of you are, but <laughs> uh, generally at the beginning of the year is quite hectic. You know, life gets in the way, and sometimes that gives me a little bit less time to make videos. Otherwise, though, I will thank you all very much for watching. Hopefully this was helpful to you. If it was, let me know. Find a way of reaching out to me. There's many different ways, you do, especially the comment section. It's a great way of getting in touch with me if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, or anything like that. But I hope to see you again next time, and thank you very much for watching.